Ha, huh. tablet, laptop, tablet, laptop, that's cool. Oh, and there's Intel, nice. Okay, and now I got a laptop, and it's just a laptop. Oh, I also have to get a tablet, I guess. And a keypad. Oh, and a stylus. <laughs> and a dongle? For 50 years, Intel has been the king of the global microprocessor industry. However, it has started to lose its appeal and market share. Some observers predict that this decade will mark the end of Intel's dominance. Meanwhile, AMD, the underdog always in second place, has managed to rise and snatch Intel's market share. AMD is on the path to dethrone Intel from its throne. What's happening to Intel and what makes AMD shake its power? Most importantly, what lessons can we learn? Let's uncover the facts in this 50-year rivalry story. I will start by telling the story of these two companies. From their early establishment 50 years ago to unraveling how AMD, which always lost competition against Intel, managed to shake the king from his throne. After that, we will discuss important lessons we can get from the rivalry of these two companies. Before we begin, to those who are yet to subscribe, please press the subscribe button and activate the notification bell. In fact, Intel and AMD have the same roots. The founders of these two companies previously worked in the same company, Fairchild Semiconductor in California, which we now know as Silicon Valley. As young engineers, they wanted to develop more innovative products, but sadly their superiors chose to be cautious and ultimately disappointed their aspiration. So in 1968, Robert Noyce and Gordon Moore from Fairchild then founded Intel. Andy Grove joined Intel as its first employee. A year later, eight other employees left the company and founded Advanced Micro Devices AMD. Initially, both Intel and AMD had roughly equal market shares until one day. IBM chose Intel's x86 architecture chip for all the personal computers they were making. Since then until now, the majority of computers, whatever the brand, use Intel's x86 architecture. In a short time, Intel surpassed AMD. But then something interesting happened to avoid monopoly. IBM asked Intel to find another supplier who could manufacture the x86 chip. And AMD started producing it with a license and specs for the 286 chip from Intel. However, Intel, not wanting its market share to be eroded by AMD, developed the more powerful 386 chip series and refused to give AMD the license and specs for it. As a result, AMD was forced to reverse engineer Intel's 386 chipset. But before AMD could build its 386 version, Intel released the 486 series. Although AMD's 386 version was better than Intel's and could approach Intel's 486 series, in terms of performance, the time required for re-engineering the chip always left AMD behind Intel. Almost throughout its history, AMD has become an underdog to Intel, which dominates all market sectors of PCS, including high-performance processors. AMD focuses on middle and lower class chipsets that are more affordable. Intel chips have a reputation for being more stable and easy to use for most computers. While AMD is favored by advanced users who know how to overclock processors to make them work quicker, in 2005, Apple, which previously used PowerPC chips, switched to Intel for all of its product lines. This further solidified Intel as the unrivaled ruler of the microprocessor market. It's also important to know that Intel far outperforms AMD in terms of marketing. Intel managed to change the x86 brand became Pentium, a more familiar name, enabling it to reach a broader general public. Pentium and Intel inside have been ingrained in our minds, helping Intel sell more products. 
Unlike Intel, which focused on marketing, AMD focused more on research and development. In 2007, AMD launched the first dual-core processor called the AMD Athlon X2. Unfortunately, AMD, as usual, wasn't good at marketing it. As a result, one year later, Intel's well-marketed core to Duo emerged and ultimately captured the market. For years, it seemed that AMD was destined to play second fiddle to Intel in the microprocessor market share. With little competition, innovation at Intel began to slow down. Almost all new offerings from Intel provided only minor performance improvements from generation to generation, enough to keep the revenue flowing into the company. Intel eventually became trapped in bureaucracy, and their best engineers began to leave. They abandoned Intel, which was led by those without technical vision. Their focus was on making a profit as quickly as possible. So, when an email came requesting Intel to design and manufacture a chip for the iPhone, they declined. According to calculations, the offer wasn't profitable enough for Intel, a decision the CEO at the time later regretted. How did Intel continue to lead the market amid their innovation slowdown? The answer is that Intel carried out a series of clever marketing campaigns. Intel engaged in anti-competitive practices, breaking collaborative contracts with AMD and intentionally providing false information to hamper AMD's progress. Intel also incentivized companies like HP, Toshiba, Fujitsu, Sony, Dell, and Lenovo not to use AMD CPS in their products. In 2014, Dr. Lisa Su was appointed AMD's CEO. Her focus at that time was maintaining the company's sustainability and accelerating the development of new technologies. In 2017, AMD introduced the Ryzen processor based on their new Zen microprocessor architecture, a product capable of challenging Intel's best chips. This marked the starting point of AMD shaking Intel's throne as the preferred microprocessor manufacturer following the launch of the new Zen architecture. Intel's consumer market share dropped to 69% from 81% the previous year, while AMD rose from 18.1% to 31%. According to data from Passmark Software in the first quarter of 2021, AMD controlled 39.4% of the CPU market share across all types, while Intel controlled 60.61%. In the same year as AMD released another processor, Apple, which relied on Intel-made processors for their computer products, complained about Intel's processors failing to keep up with the increased capabilities they expected. Unfortunately, Intel didn't seem serious about addressing these concerns. Eventually, in 2018, after a 15-year partnership, Apple announced that they would be leaving Intel. Apple decided to design their own chip called Apple Silicon, based on ARM architecture and outsourced manufacturing to TSMC. Apple released the first Apple Silicon chip, named M1, in 2020. This ARM-based chip proved to be faster than Intel's chips generated less heat and used far less power. The M1 chip's capabilities even outperformed the latest 11th generation Intel processors. This development became a significant blow, further shaking Intel from their throne. The next blow came from Nvidia. Seeing the power of the ARM architecture used by Apple, the graphics processing unit manufacturer announced a shift in most of their production to embrace the ARM architecture, building on its ARM-based grace, NVIDIA is now supporting a cloud-based supercomputer of its own. Companies like Samsung, Qualcomm, and Microsoft are adopting similar initiatives, manufacturing custom chips and releasing ARM-based laptops. This seems to be where the industry is heading for Intel which has stuck to its x86 architecture, this could mean a significant challenge. If the industry shifts towards ARM architecture, Intel could lose its market relevance. In fact, 
AMD is underway with its ARM-based chip development. Expected to be a serious contender to Apple Silicon, Intel, however, has shown no interest in adopting the ARM architecture so far. Despite this, Intel isn't sitting on its laurels. To understand their next steps, we can take away some lessons. Firstly, strong product and technological understanding are vital. A clever marketing strategy that manipulates market perception might suffice in the short run, but ultimately, nothing can replace the strength of a superior product when brand positioning does not align with product quality and differentiation. Brand integrity becomes compromised and could even result in a negative brand image shift. In customer perception, secondly, vertical integration should be well thought out, or else it can become a heavyweight. Instead of taking AMD and Apple's approach designing their chips, yet outsourcing production to other companies like TSMC and Intel chose to handle everything in-house. When leadership changes occurred and prominent engineers left, coupled with the increasing complexity of microprocessor technology, Intel faced a series of significant challenges. Thirdly, limits and weaknesses can serve as sources of inspiration and innovation, while strengths can become the source of failure. Intel's unchallenged success became a boomerang for them. Stagnation and lack of innovation dimmed their light in front of consumers. Conversely, AMD, when cornered, became more focused. The creativity and fighting spirit turned AMD into a company that successfully turned the tables to refresh their approach. Intel appointed Pat Gelsinger as their CEO in early 2021, replacing Bob Swan. In his inaugural strategic presentation, Gelsinger revealed several of Intel's initiatives in an effort to reclaim dominance in the microprocessor market. He referenced it as IDM 2.0, comprising of three main strategies. The first is to make technological progress in developing advanced chips, utilizing their global factory network. In 2023, Intel plans to release its first 7 nanometers desktop processor, Named Meteor Lake, it's important to remember that in 2021, Apple had launched products with an M1X processor based on 5 nanometers technology. In terms of size and efficiency, 5 nanometers surpass 7 nanometers. Secondly, Intel plans to use third-party factories to achieve more efficient production. This move is part of Intel's plan to adapt to changing market expectations and enhance their production flexibility. Thirdly, Intel aims to establish a world-class foundry service, where they would function as a contract manufacturer similar to TSMC, producing chips for other tech companies. To achieve this objective, Intel has been actively networking with PC manufacturers, including launching an ad campaign starring Justin Long, known as the Mac guy in the old Mac versus PC commercials. In these ads, Justin's role is far from his Mac guy character. He serves up praises for Intel-based PCS and subtly ridicules Apple products. Nevertheless, Intel's CEO, Pat Gelsinger, seems unbothered to approach Apple to discuss potentially manufacturing Apple Silicon chips at its new Arizona facility. Do you believe? Intel's strategy is sufficient to help them regain their position at the top. Leave your comment below. Enjoy!